So what they uh, recommend is like a <laughs> treatment protocol <laughs> is um, mammograms, chest MRIs, uh, and transvaginal ultrasounds every three to six months. So I was doing all that for six, seven years Whoa. before I decided to have my surgeries. So it's a lot. It's wow. getting really comfortable, you know, legs splayed open while there's multiple doctors oh, taking a look shit. at you with a camera inside of you, checking out your ovaries. It's kind of cool to see on a screen, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it's just to keep tabs on where everything's at. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So just like an ultrasound that they do on a pregnant belly. Yeah. But they're doing it on like this it's rod. Like a wand. Yeah. This I had wand that. that goes up inside of you and they you move it that? to the right. They move it to the left and they check both your ovaries. Does it feel good if you wanted to get into no. the mood? No. Never. It's cold. See, that's no. how dudes dudes are. Dudes are well, like, oh, you want to you wanna put us <clears throat> like a, a, a rubber thing around my wee wee? Go ahead. No, sure. Bullshit. <laughs> they tell you to cough and they do grab your balls and shit. That doesn't feel good because they try not to do it in a sexual way. They try to yeah. like, it's really so, go like. It's, you know, it's in that <laughs> sterile doctor setting. It's yeah. so Cold. unsexual. And then they've got this thing pressing in you and then they'll press right here. So it's yeah. just Ooh. uncomfortable pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but they if you give really you like a warm use your imagination, gel. they put like a warm gel oh, I didn't on get it. No warm gel. Uh, I got well, some cold ass. See if I got a warm gel. I mean, bullshit. <laughs> thank God they do that. They're tr they're trying, yeah, right? Yeah, they're yeah. trying. <laughs> um, but it's kind of cool to lay back on the screen and be like, oh, there's my ovaries. There's my uterus. It's like not that big, not as big as you'd think. Um, hey, you thought you had a big pussy? I mean, no, no, your actual uterus. I know. I just wanted to say but, pussy. Oh, well. And as someone that's never had kids, it's just a little guy. Ah. <laughs> just, just chilling in there. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have a big pussy, all right? Well, listen, those things, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, so that's the treatment kind of protocol that I did for years and years and years. What made you do it for six, seven years? I just never felt was ready for denial? surgery. Oh. Was it part of it, part? part of it. Yeah, part of it. There was a couple um, months there where like I put off just going because I just didn't want to deal with it. Yeah. Like I would, I would very much just compartmentalize and kind of just put that down. Yeah. Put that to the side. It's an ugly thing I don't want to look at right now. Yeah, it's too real. It's now it's right too there. Fucking real. And um, but and I, I just never felt ready for the surgeries. And so, what did you think worst case scenario was? Worst case scenario was that I go to one of these appointments and I already have cancer. Oh, uh, got it. Like I, I, I had it. a biopsy once um, where I had found a little lump in uh, my right breast, like right about here. Uh, and I was like, okay, responsible thing to do. Let's go get it checked out. So they did a mammogram. They did an ultrasound. Like you found it yourself, like a little mm -hmm, lump? Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and not very big. It kind of just felt like a little, like one of these, like a little bead. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, like a little pretty bead. Hard. And um, I went in and they did all that. And they're like, okay, like considering your situation, let's do a biopsy and fuck biopsies. What's up with that? Tell it's me. It's basically like a staple gun to your chest because they're taking a, a core sample. Yes, yeah, right? so they got so to penetrate and then take mm -hmm, something out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, poom. and Ooh. like you're awake, but you're numb. Okay. And like, they're kind of like, I've got like white, you know, sterile paper everywhere. And it's just this breast exposed. And I'm just bleeding everywhere. And it's crazy because you can't feel anything. And you're looking and I'm just like, right, that's a lot of blood. That's incredible. Like this should hurt. And Aww. it does afterwards. Um, but yeah, I had one biopsy done. And then in 2020, I had found maybe two or three other lumps. Oh, up. damn. And that was 2020, right? So it was hard to get into the doctor. Yeah. It's mid-COVID. They're not taking anything not that isn't an emergency. Yeah. So I had to fight to get in. And what did you do to fight? Um, lie. Oh, <laughs> like tell them that things were worse than they were. Nice. Oh, yeah. Was it's that a pretty cool healthcare system we have? I know. Horror. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was I had to lie. Was that your sister like going like, no, be persistent. Do it. Or was it? Just, no, that oh, was me. That was stud. me. Yeah. And I like, I, I, you get to that point where you realize that oh, no one really has my back. I have to be my own advocate. Yep. Yeah. Cause like, right now the priority well, is no really. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. right now the priority is COVID. Right. And then if you're not their priority, you're like, Hey, mm -hmm. I got two lumps. Yeah. Could turn into three, could turn into four. Mm -hmm. I might not die of COVID, but I'm going to die of cancer. So right. I need to get my ass in yeah. there somehow. Like I'm taking this shit super seriously and I need you to also. Yeah. Like this is my own life. And if you aren't aggressive about taking care of it, they're not going to be. You During know? this whole time, um, you're an athlete, right? Yes. So as an athlete, knowing that there's like this, did you feel like 100% healthy? Like you're, you. Yes. Or did you feel like you're compromised as an athlete? Did it become a mental crutch? <clears throat> I never felt compromised as an athlete, 
but I've always felt a weight on me. And maybe not even a weight, but like this dark cloud looming behind me. Like right. someday For you're sure. going to have this to deal with. For sure. And it's a big, heavy, scary thing. And it was like just kind of this just thing that's always there, like always in the back of your mind. Yeah. And you can't ever forget about it. Yeah. Um, so, but I never felt compromised as an athlete. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but 2020 sucked because I was, I had all these scares and I'm like, fuck this, fuck. Besides the three lumps, what else? That's, I mean, that's, what, I that's, that's okay, what I meant. That's huge. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Like finding them and then just the, what if this is it? Like, yeah. cause my, my aunt, so back up a second. Okay. The, um, the gene is actually from my dad's side of the family, which is crazy because my mom does have breast cancer. But um, on my father's side, his mom, his older sister, him, oh. and his younger sister <gasps> have all had cancer. So it's just bop, 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 wow. right on down Fuck. the line. Wow. And my youngest aunt got cancer, or got breast cancer when she was 30. Oh. And so for me, 30 was always like that age where I'm like, okay, I gotta get my shit together. I gotta yeah. get my and shit together. 2020 is year 30? No, I was 32. Okay, okay. So it was like, okay. Yeah. Tick tock, pitter patter, let's go. Um, but so I had all those scares and I'm like, fuck this, fuck living in fear and and being so afraid every time I find something that isn't quite right. And, you know, everything that I had checked out was had been okay. Thank God. Um, and then I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. I'm at a good place uh, mentally, emotionally, financially. I'm in a stable relationship with a loving partner that, has had experiences with surgeries and can support me. She's talking about um, Matt Vincent. We also have him on this podcast. A, Check it out, please. He's out of few. Uh, <laughs> but just felt like I was finally in a place where I could handle it and a good place. Um, and when you know you have a surgery coming, you can buy insurance accordingly. So I bought like better health insurance because uh, I knew I was going to schedule it for 2021. And so what is it? November in uh, May of this year. I had my surgery. I saw you guys two weeks later. Yeah, with some <laughs> amazing boobs. So yes. what, what was that like? So the whole surgery process was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I've never had a major surgery before. And this is like a major one to start off with. Uh, the first- What makes it major? Like, are you out for like, I don't know, five uh, hours I think or something? I was out for like two and a half or three. Oh shit. But well, I mean, it's I'm, major I'm, because she's removing I'm cut entire, completely open. Yeah, yeah. she's move, removing body parts. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what the definition of major is. Well, well I, see. I guess. I don't know if like chopping off your leg is major that's or like. Major. That's probably major, but like, let's just say a wisdom tooth. You're out, but I wouldn't call that major. It's not major. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was cut open here underneath. And then what they basically do is flip. Oh you up. my God and take out all the breast tissue that they possibly can, that they can see. Holy shit. And I chose to go, there's lots of ways you can do this and we can dive into that. Um, Why did they make us choose shit like that? <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know, you know more. You tell right, me what right. to do. I can't believe that took only two and a half hours. There's not a lot of breast tissue to remove. Oh, I just feel like I just feel like <laughs> I feel like it would just take I don't know. It would take me like at least five hours. So okay, can't even so, build an IKEA desk in two hours. Mm, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Mastectomy? What? Um, but so there's actually two doctors working on you at the same time. Oh. So I went direct to implant. So I chose to have a mastectomy and a reconstruction. And I was a good candidate to go direct to implant because I was healthy enough. They thought there was enough room there that they could put a cute little implant in, right? Mm. So um, the surgeon who performs the mastectomy is doing that on this side, cleans me out, and then he moves to the other side and my plastic surgery surgeon comes in to this side. How efficient. Wow. Pops in the little implant. Gets That's it all adjusted. Sick. I also have cadaver tissue in there, like <gasps> tendons and ligaments from oh. a cadaver. Why do you have that yeah. for? To help hold them in place. Oh. As there's none of me in there to help I hold it in see. place. 